Etymology of some expressions with will. First of all, let's think. Let's imagine I want to stop smoking. Okay, let's imagine I'm a smoker and I want to stop smoking. And uh, so I will say, no, I won't smoke anymore. So I will get my pack, throw it in the garbage and say, now I'm a different person, all right? And then I'll go home and after five hours, I'll say, wow, my life is getting better, right? I can breathe better, you know, I think I'm going to live much more. And uh, I go to sleep, I have some problems to sleep, but uh, that's okay, I'm strong. Uh, I wake up in the next uh, morning, going to work, I buy a pack of cigarettes and I say, I can't, I can't, and I just smoke one cigarette and I'll say, oh, it's just this one, and of course I, sm I smoke the whole packet. Uh, the whole pack, right? Uh, why? Why did that happen? Because I don't have willpower, okay? That's the, the word there, willpower. If you have willpower, your will, and will here, you can have this idea of desire, okay? Of uh, what you want, what you wish, okay? So your will is very strong, is very powerful. So you have willpower. Another will we can have is, let's imagine I have someone in my life, which I don't, but let's, oh yeah, let's imagine I know I'm going to die and I have many, many books, not only here, many books everywhere. And uh, I don't want my kids to fight over my books, okay? So what will I do? I will write a will, okay? T uh, saying in the will, I will say uh, which kid should keep uh, which group of books, you know? that's a will and again I think in that case it's very uh, easy to understand because basically it's my desire it's what I want okay by the way that's also the the etymology for the word to be willing when you are willing to do something you have the disposition to do something I can tell my students well I'm always willing to help just talk to me if you need uh, anything okay so basically, if I am willing, willing to help, I want to help, okay? One more interesting word, maybe two, with will. Let's go to the Bible, okay? So I don't know how many of you guys have read or have heard about the Bible, but you know, there was though these two guys called Adam and Eve. They are actually the first people alive, according to the Bible. Uh, and uh, they were uh, perfect creatures. They lived in a beautiful place called the Garden uh, of uh, Eden. And there, in that garden, there were two very important trees. One tree was the tree of eternal life, if I'm not wrong. So you would eat from the tree and you would always leave, live. The other tree was the tree of knowledge. That basically it was a prohibited tree. Okay, The tree was there right in the middle of the garden. Of course, you all know the story. The serpent went there, tempted Eve. Eve convinced Adam. Both of them ate from the fruit from the prohibited tree. And they were expelled from the paradise. And now we die, we get old, we have to work. And the women suffer when they bear a child, and etc. And etc. Uh, my question is okay, if that was the tree of, uh, you know, evil, if that was the tree that could destroy human beings and could take human beings away from God. Why did God plant that tree in the middle of the garden? Why didn't he like hide the tree? Or even better, why didn't he just not create the tree in the first place? You know? Why putting a tree in the middle of the garden and showing it to the man and to the woman and saying, look, you cannot eat from this tree, right? Why? Can you think about it? If you want, I think it's a nice exercise. Pause the video and try to get an answer for that. Uh, and the answer for that is our uh, new word f with will to give men 
free will. What is free will? It's the liberty to choose whatever you want. Okay? According to the Bible, according uh, to Christianism, uh, God, of course, God didn't want men and women to eat from the tree. But if he didn't give them an option, if he hadn't given them, uh, uh, you know, the possibility of uh, choosing something else, we would have been created just like uh, small robots, you know. So what is the big deal of choosing God if this is the only option? That, that's the, the spirit of uh, of uh, the free will okay and of course you may be thinking that we also have will uh, for the auxiliary verb for the future right that's actually very very interesting and I'm going to record another video comparing will and shall that is another way to say uh, something in the future